Greetings here, Andy Johnson, looking at 15 scaffolds for narrative writing, narrative writing, telling a story, which includes biography, autobiography, personal narrative, memoir, that sort of thing. Now, these are temporary structures, scaffolds not meant to be permanent. That means you take them away once the building is created. In any type of writing, and they are forms, the forms should never be more important than the function. Meaning, when you have scaffolds like the five paragraph essay, and by the way, in my writing life, I've been writing for 30 years, I've never had to write a five paragraph essay. But that's okay for learning stuff. But if you have only three paragraphs or six paragraphs, saying what you want to say is always more important than the structure. So in these scaffolds, Never let the form get in the way of what you want to say. This comes from my book, which will be published in 2024, Being and Becoming Teachers of Writing, some of these ideas. <clears throat> and it's based on the idea that ideas always beget more ideas. When you encounter an idea, your brain naturally associates. So seeing ideas automatically links you with other ideas. So a lot of these scaffolds enables you to see ideas and begin to link and with anything always adopt and adapt nothing ever comes straight out of the package to be used in your classroom with everything adopt and adapt very simple for narrative writing low tech the timeline you list events on the timeline and as you see the events it reminds you of other events and characters arise from that so you list the characters very simple. You use that then as a pre-writing activity to create your draft. Same with cartoon boxes. This is for preschool, kindergarten, first grade. Draw the picture first, then describe what's happening using temporary spelling or writing or an adult says what's going on here and writes in the boxes and students can reread their story, their personal narrative. This was an interesting one described by Graham and Harris. Sometimes story ideas get in the way and can disrupt creative thinking. So here you simply generate just the words and you use the scaffold then to create the story. You have your story idea there. So as you think of your story idea, then you just generate some action words or verbs related to that and some describing words. And it's that idea that ideas beget more ideas. And you use that. You write a draft of your story, then using the action words, things that happen, and the describing words. And I have these broken down into steps. If you want to pause, and read that vocabulary strategy for story or narrative writing. And you can stop the video here. Event character strategy, same thing except you're listing events, not in chronological order, not linear, but you're simply, you start with a story idea. You list your ideas here, things that could happen in your story, characters, let the characters arise and use that to write the draft of your story. So you're having the events. And you can pause and you can see this, the steps, ideas, action, events, characters, draft, revise, continue revising. And you use this to write your draft. Beginning, middle, end. And here you began to think of the story in parts as a whole. So you start with a story idea. I'd like to write a story about a whale in Wood Lake. And maybe one or two characters, but something that could happen in the beginning, things that could happen in the end, middle, and in the end. So you see the, the, the story in its entirety and in the parts. And ideas beget more ideas. You use this to write the draft of your story. Ideas beget more ideas. And you can pause and you can see the steps. Use this for your teaching. Problemizer. <laughs> Most stories have a problem of some sort. 
So you have your characters, you define the problem, stories are based around the problem, and you define the solution, what could be the solution. So a good story, story idea is a problem, a solution, and then you describe the steps to get there. Or if you're writing a personal narrative, a problem in your life, how you solved it, the steps, and characters, and use that to write your draft. Characters, problem, solution, means and analysis. And again, for writing a narrative, a story, start with the beginning st state, the ending state. And by the way, a one definition of problem is noticing the difference between current and desired states. This is the beginning state. This is the ending state. This is what needs to get moved from beginning to end. It's called a means and analysis for narrative writing. You could use this with a personal narrative, beginning, ending, the steps that got me there. So you're describing just a part of your life, personal narrative. And you can see the steps there. Creative problem solving. This is another common problem solving idea. This is good for a fiction writing. Here's the problem. You generate a whole bunch of solutions. You use the most interesting solution for your story, and then you elaborate and refine. This becomes the basis for your draft. The problem, a whole bunch of solutions, the most interesting one. This becomes the basis for your draft. If you're writing a personal narrative as it's happening, this is a problem I'm experiencing. Here are a bunch of solutions. This will be the most interesting solution or the most workable solution. And you see the steps. <clears throat> this is for narrative writing. This is probably best for fiction, narrative fiction, but you could also use it for your own life as a problem-solving strategy. And again, adopt and adapt. Not all these are going to work for everyone, but there should be at least two good ideas here that you can use. Basic story grammar for narrative writing. The basic story grammar is in every story there's characters, there's actions, events, and settings. And again, you start with your story idea, your characters, your events, and your settings, and use that to write the draft of your story. Adopt and adapt. Write your draft. Go back, look for places to add. Adopt and adapt. Oh, I like this one. This is interesting. Scene writing for character uh, chart for narrative writing. Narrative writing, personal memoirs, we have thick descriptions often of scenes. So this is like a movie director kind of planning what is in the scene. And good narrative writing creates a movie in the head. So for writing a scene or adding depth and dimension to the scene, you add descriptive elements. This is where it takes place. This is what you would see here. Things happening, the sounds, the smells, the emotions, the feels, the textures, and write a draft of what takes place in the scene. So you begin with the scene. Or maybe you could begin with the storyline and say, I need to develop this scene and use this to create the scene. Either way, start with the scene, let the story come. Start with the story, let the scene come. Either way. Metaphors are <laughs> chart for narrative writing. Narrative writing. The purpose is to get more descriptive language into the narration. Metaphors and simulates. And to do this, we use a metaphorzer. I love that word. We have the thing or event. And what do you associate is like? And then you create the metaphor or simile. So you start with the thing and you associate. Remember, ideas beget more ideas. So you have this nice metaphorzer. And then <clears throat> you create the pre-writing, the draft. And after the draft occurs, then you find interesting things or events to add into the draft. Doop. You associate and you create the metaphors. And metaphors go places where single line descriptions cannot. 
It adds depth. The metaphor says something that words cannot. It gets you right to it and then describes. That's why we use metaphors and similes. The ad adjectivizer chart <laughs> to get adjectives more purposeful, colorful language and teach the power of words. Here you, you have the person, the place, the thing or experience, and you just list a whole bunch of describing words. Remember, ideas beget more ideas to create ad adjectives for that person, place, thing. Ideas beget more ideas. We have the draft, then we find the person, place, or things within the draft, have the thing, describing words. So this is a strategy to get more describing words into your narrative writing. This could be a personal narrative, biography, whatever it is. Dialoguer makes the characters come to life. You record what students say. It's uh, So you have, and this works good with pairs because you could have students take, uh, each person take a character, but you have what person A says, and you describe then the reactions, the movements, the inner thoughts or outer actions taking place. Hello, he said. He buttons his tie. You look very good today. Turns around. All right. So yes, you have dialogue, but then you record the actions and reactions that characters take uh, with each other. Conversation between A and B include inner thoughts, physical movements, and insert the dialogue. And if, here's the thing about the dialogue er, it creates backstory. You don't have to include all of the dialogue in the story, but it adds depth and dimension to your own understanding of the characters in that scene, allows you to see them. Newsograph for narrative writing and a news story describing what happens. You are narrating, you are the narrator, is a form of narrative writing. So you capture the story first to the best of your ability. Just write, 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 don't think. Then you identify the important details, who, where, when, how, why, and use that as the basis to write your news story. And the last one is called Prime the Pump to get the ideas flowing. I use this quite a bit. Here, you read a something that a short passage of a personal narrative or memoir or a biography. Ideally, this will be written by you, the teacher. This is what happened. And as you are reading it, students are listening, and, and you often say, describe a time in your life when. So you're priming the pump. Those of you too young to remember these old hand pumps, you had to pour water in there to prime it to get the water to come up. So you prime the pump with a cup of water. So you always brought over a cup of water and you were able to prime. You get the idea. So that's actually a metaphor, prime the pump. Listen to the story, note the ideas. All right, just some ideas for you. For narrative writing, narrative writing includes biographies, autobiographies, memoir, and personal narrative.